Hi there, this is my third attempt. I'm trying to uh, finish a glass of uh, Beaujolais Primeur. Almost succeeded. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's very good for my videos. First I want to show you this, because it, it's like tacky. This is a uh, Wi-Fi hotspot uh, USB. And it looks quite new. It is. It looks actually perfectly new. Uh, maybe a little bit of rust here and there. A little bit. Very small, but anyway, it works. It's out of a printer uh, that was thrown away, and I'm just I just want to say first, like if you see high tech material being thrown away, uh, pick it up, take it home, get some screwdrivers, open it up, and pick out anything like this. That that is that is simply you cannot make this yourself. You're not being able to import it once the money is gone, once the oil is gone, once the order is gone. You won't be able to access this. And you're throwing it away right now. That's ridiculous. You know, you, some people say, "Well, we grind it up, we take out the gold." That's nice, <laughs> but uh, you know, you might end up in a situation where you want to have a microcontroller or a, 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 a resistor or a diode or a transistor, and you won't be able to find it anywhere. You know, in in, in a similar vein, uh, you know, if you want to be, let's say, we are able to think, humans, and and. We can use our mind as a tool. Uh, that's basically you have two choices: either you're smart or you're strong. Uh, better start using that tool and start training it. Uh, it's just a waste to, uh, you know, to be not prepared, to not prepare while you can. Sounds a little bit ominous, but uh, it's not intended to be ominous. It's simply, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be trouble ahead, that's quite clear, so respond to it. There's another thing I would like to show, and that's this. This is also a recycled uh, thing, it's a, a thermos flask. You can see inside here, it, uh, and actually if you open it up, you can see the bottom. Why do I have this? Well, this is a little product, and I want to make it an open source technology development product, uh, uh, project. I already talked about heliostats and stuff like that. This is going to be making heat out of wind energy. I built a website about it. It's online. It's been online for quite a while. There's no commercial products in this uh, field. Uh, what I want to do is I want to generate heat using wind uh, in this uh, thermos flask. And because it's in the thermos flask, it will stay there and will be easy to measure. So I have to make a little bit of a contraption around it. I have uh, two, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, fancy name for, for resistors that can measure uh, temperature. Uh, a microcontroller, so that they can measure the outside and the inside temperature. Then I also want to measure the rotation of the wind uh, axle. And I have to build a little bit of a small wind turbine. But and then I have to find out how to convert heat to uh, uh, or uh, wind energy to heat most efficiently. Uh, then you end up with a product with which you might be able to heat your home. Final design uh, in the winter when it's wind, when the wind is blowing, when it's wind. Sorry, my English is not uh, very good today. But anyway, so this is also uh, to be continued. Uh, talking about renewables or about recycling, I can also show you this. This is a wired hub, uh, a wire, wired router that I picked up for next to nothing. Uh, That's something that people throw away. They say, okay, I have a router, I don't need it anymore, I throw it away. It works. Anyway, um, maybe this is the boring part, now the exciting part might start. Uh, I've read about the fact that Iran is cut off from the international money uh, traffic, uh, so uh, Swift, uh, uh, Swift doesn't work anymore, so you can, the, the Iranian banks are cut off and can no longer influence uh, liquidity in other banks. That's, that's, that's the most important way to view it. And I think that's a completely logical uh, thing to happen. It's what I expected. And why? Well, because I see the world banking system as a carbon credit uh, system, which means that the amount of credit has to match the amount of carbon that is available in the market at all times. Uh, if it doesn't, then it will lead to price changes, because more people, there, let's say, if you have more money to buy uh, the gasoline in the gas station, so suddenly you give everybody a thousand euro, 
everybody starts to think about hey I might go on holiday let's take the car let's drive to France they will go to the gas station but you didn't supply the gas station with more gasoline uh, uh, then the prices go up of the gasoline because there's only so much and you don't want that to happen because if it's, the, if it's the logistics for a product then the price of the products goes up so basically if you flood the market with money uh, and you don't match the carbon supply then you'll find that prices go up that you get inflation if you let's say increase the carbon supply all of a sudden then of course you know uh, basically the prices price of, of, of let's say fossil fuels of, of gasoline at the gas station will drop because the guy in the gas station wants to make money of his he wants to make his margin and uh, and cost of products will will go down and and that will mean that for instance uh, 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 well that let's say the producers of these products will have less income which means that they cannot service their debt as the banks expected uh, which is not the most important aspect of case of, of course but it's way too complicated to explain the relationship between carbon credit system and debt I should make a little story about that but to be short you have to match those two and if Iran stops supplying carbon to the world then it should not supply any credit to the world anymore it should not be able to influence the amount of it it has to be able to the, the countries that, that, that add to the pool of, of carbon whether it be coal, gas or, or oil need to also be able to instruct and, 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 and tell the banking system how much liquidity they can allow in society now at the moment uh, the whole process uh, which basically got me onto the, uh, onto the idea of carbon credit which is different from the petrodollar because the petrodollar is the dollar and the carbon credit is simply all currencies if they're paper uh, uh, let's say are part of that system but the idea that got me onto it was the fact that that banks can front run carbon shortages by reducing liquidity in society so that you don't notice carbon shortages and that's, a, and that's the biggest problem we have right now. We have the financial crisis. Once again, today I saw a video on Max Kais of a guy going like, the collapse of the dollar, it's going to be uh, difficult, and what are the worst places to be? Well, worst place, California, uh, because it's so big, and New York, it's a big city, and, uh, and, and you, you won't be able to, uh, let's say, because once the dollar is gone, the food supply is gone, and, and, and etc. No, it's the other way around dollar collapses because the oil supply is collapsing because the oil supply is slipping out of the control of the US because other countries are more attractive to uh, well <laughs> are more able to to get that oil are more able to bargain for it because the, basically the US has polarized the whole Middle East against it they don't want to supply it with oil anyway I hope that was the interesting part uh, of this video. Uh, say one thing more, and that is that I also read that in, in Greece they are now starting local currencies. And if you think about local currencies and you think about the carbon credit system way it's set up, uh, then you see that there's there's always a risk of a local currency to be fatally flawed. And that is if it doesn't acknowledge the need for uh, for the carbon in order to sustain production and activities to give an example is you can say well German is, Germany is a, is a, is a, is a the Wirtschaft uh, miracle of Europe it's the, it's the most the biggest exporter and that's fantastic in terms of value what the, but what would happen if there would be no oil supply to Germany it would, not, it would nothing nothing would happen it's actually one of the biggest one would say carbon importers of the world as well it has to be because it's exporting so much where that and and, and if it's if it's not importing carbon and it's importing steel and aluminum and, 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 and copper and all this stuff that's that's the bay let's say so so productivity in itself uh, in a carbon credit economy is not worth anything it's 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 actually uh, it, it it functions only to make sure that the credit side of the carbon credit economy uh, becomes more uh, important, more, more visible. 
Why? Because there's people that you give money that don't produce anything, like me, for instance. I don't, let's say, if I'm making IT software, you give me an income, but <laughs> I'm only typing all day. What the fuck do I earn income with? Uh, and then you have producers, like the baker and, and, and the butcher, and all these people that actually, let's say, make something, and I give them the money so they can... Uh, they can do what they do, so they can buy the oil to do what they do. It's not <laughs> anyway. Um, and and but everybody's consuming. I'm consuming the food that the baker and the butcher is is preparing for me. But the baker and the butcher they're consuming uh, the food that's fed to the cows and, and 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 the fertilizer that's needed to make the grain. They're also consumers. Everybody is a consumer. Everybody is a carbon consumer. There's no net production. Um, but anyway, this video is way too long. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for listening. And I hope you see my other videos as well.